Stop! Are you for real? Stop! Stop! <laughs> Entitlement can only get you so far, especially when the law comes knocking. Oh, I, I don't know what's going on. Please tell me what's going on. Oh, why are you being so mean? You didn't have to let me breathe. The person that filled me, he was a rookie. So no, you didn't do research. I'm, I'm In this video, we dive into the shocking moments when spoiled teen Karens believe their parents' influence will shield them from legal consequences. But as reality hits hard, these teens quickly learn that the law doesn't care who your parents are. Get ready for a wild ride of arrogance, attitude, and some much-needed life lessons. Um, yes? Where you going? Yes? Where you going? Okay, let go, let go. The story begins at a place we all know well, Walmart. On August 16th, 2023, a 19-year-old found herself on the wrong side of the law after leaving a Walmart supercenter without paying for merchandise. It didn't take long for law enforcement to get involved. What followed was a series of legal actions that could change the course of her life. Let's break down what happened. Um, yes? Where are you going? Yes? Where are you going? Okay, let go, let go. Come this way. Please. No. Please let go. Why? You're my arm. Why? I'm not hurting you. Stop. Please, Stop. Allie. Okay, Stop. Stop. Put your hands behind your back. Okay. I don't want to go home. Please, I want to go home. Don't put them too tight. Please. Allie. I think he's actually paying for his item. Oh. Like but they don't want to press charges on him. But. Okay. <laughs> the officers detained her in the parking lot and then escorted her back inside so Walmart's loss prevention team could assess the total value of the stolen merchandise. On the way back, she continuously cried and called out for her mother. A scene that made the officers shake their heads at someone who appeared to be an adult. While family ties are natural, in the eyes of the law, no one is exempt from responsibility just because they are still dependent on their parents. Violating the law, no matter how minor, always carries serious consequences. Oh my mommy. <laughs> Cry for their mommy. I don't think I've ever heard a grown woman cry for their mom. <laughs> Did she walk away from me? Yeah, she was walking. As soon as she saw me, like leave this, she saw me leave the store. She looks left, and then she's like, "What are you crying for?" Because I'm scared. Are you crying because you got caught? No, because I know I didn't get it. I don't know what you just said. Then why'd you do it? It's not a very good reason, is it? No, I know. I'm sorry. You're okay, Mom. Come this way. Inside. Come down. You're fine. We're not going to hurt you. I want to go home. It's not fine. Just slide the This hurts my wrist, though. Well, they're not supposed to be comfortable oh, for you. It's cutting, it's cutting my wrist. Okay, well, they're going to get taken off in a second. Oh. He's just going to I don't think I've ever heard a grown woman cry. Owie! 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 Do those sunglasses belong to you? Yes, I do! Okay. Here, stand up. The hoodie too, right? Oh, yes, it is. I'm sorry. Once informed that she's under arrest, the woman admits to shoplifting but seems unsure why she did it. Her fear of going to jail is palpable as she expresses regret and panic over what's to come. This moment highlights the anxiety individuals face when their actions catch up with them. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pay for it all. No. What all do you use? Huh? Do you use? Try the, the, the pills. What pills? 
Fentanyl? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if there's any in there don't, right now. Don't I don't know. Okay. I'm not gonna say that there's not, but I don't know. I'll make it with my friends first. I don't know if there's anything in it right now. Oh. Shut that down. Sorry. You're, you're fine. Okay. Give me your hand. Both of them. I have to go back with them. Yep. How is this out? I'm not even touching you. Oh, is it? It's the metal in. <laughs> He said, wow, is a degree right. name. That's mean. Tell me your name. You should be nice about it. What is your name? Cheryl. Cheryl. Oh. I'm scared. Cheryl, what's your last name? So I wrote, and I was supposed to be at court yesterday. I thought it was next Tuesday. As the conversation unfolds, she nervously brings up additional concerns, like the possibility of pills in her belongings and an impending court date. Her fear of missing that court appearance only heightens her anxiety, showing just how quickly legal troubles can snowball. This highlights how even minor infractions can spiral out of control. Just call the courts and let them know. Was it municipal court? Yeah. Just call them. What, them Richardson? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just call them and let them know. First, as soon as I've ever had, and it was because I was driving without a license. Okay. <laughs> I knew it was, I was a little stupid. <laughs> Not the end of the world, just give them a call and let them know. I don't know, I'm freaking out. Why? <laughs> I'm scared. You made a poor choice today. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to jail? Oh my. Who's the guy you were with? Huh? Who's the guy you were with? What do you mean? This is the guy you were walking around the store with. with. I didn't walk out with anyone. You, you didn't walk out, but you were walking with somebody the whole time. No, he was just walking like near me. I mean, he wasn't walking like. So he followed you throughout the store? He's my friend, and we were kind of like talking here and there, but he was like kind of like, you know, on his own mission. He was looking for some new glasses and What's like his he, name? He, he, he paid. I mean, you can look the camera, I swear he did. I know he did. Okay. <laughs> After searching the woman's bag, the police discovered a lighter and several pieces of paper indicating signs of drug use. Throughout the process, she continued to cry and expressed her struggles with homelessness. While her situation is truly unfortunate, it doesn't excuse her act of theft. Are you homeless? <laughs> I right now, yeah. 
Kind of? Yeah. Who do you live with then? I'm in between a few places right now. Okay. Smoking blues and stealing shit from Walmart definitely doesn't get you anywhere in blood jail. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. I am. They're still going to have you trespassed from here. I mean, you will no longer be welcome at Walmart or something. They're not notice a lot, but they're sorry when they get caught. I do feel sorry every time I do it. I do it, and I don't know why I do it. why do you do it? I don't know. The officer's words perfectly reflect the reality we often see with suspects like this. It's only when the handcuffs are on that people start thinking about saying sorry. And this young woman, beyond her apologies, couldn't even explain why she stole and committed other illegal acts. She confidently went on to inform the officers about her kleptomania, which she seemed to believe was her justification. It'd be like stabbing somebody and just going sorry and then continue stabbing them. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, have you ever heard of, you know, you know, be an addiction. Shoplifting? Yeah, shoplifting can be an addiction. I don't want to do it, but you know, and then I find myself doing it. Oh. What, ther oh. what therapist so do you okay. go to? No, of course not. I'm not saying it is. What therapist do you go to? I don't go to a therapist anymore. Do you go to a rehab? No. Probably should. What happened to the water from you? I quit because they weren't paying me enough. How much no. are you making now? Oh, well, None, right? No, no. So, I mean, it's because of my ID, though. I, mean, I can't get one without an ID of resident care. So nobody's going to want to keep hiring you if you keep doing that shit, and then you keep stealing. And I know that, but, you know, it's easier said than done. It's a little bit hard to do on your own. If you go down to Especially your whenever you have nobody on your listen. side that's telling you you should. Please listen. <laughs> Step for help. They actually have people there that can help you. Thank you. Alright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's up? They didn't have any? No. Wait, did you get your copy of the receipt? I think I took yours. Yeah, I gave her. Right. Yeah, she gave it to me. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I'm going to land there. You want them back in the back? Yep. You want them in the back? Huh? No, no. That's all I'm like, yeah, no shit. That's alright, then you can close it. Once detained, the 19-year-old was not only trespassed from Walmart, but also taken to the police station, where she was charged with larceny or shoplifting. According to the police report, she stole one hoodie, one sling bag, two bras, and three thongs. In many states, theft under a certain dollar amount may be considered a misdemeanor, but it's important to remember that larceny charges can leave a lasting mark on someone's criminal record. Stop! Stop! Are you for real? Stop! <laughs> On May 29, 2024, in Florida, what started as a routine traffic stop took an unexpected turn. Officers clocked a vehicle speeding at 50 miles per hour in a 35 miles per hour zone and noticed the driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt. With lights flashing and sirens blaring, the driver didn't stop right away, instead continuing for a short distance before finally pulling into a residential driveway. What could have caused this brief hesitation? Was there more behind this than just speeding and a missing seatbelt? Let's dive into the details and explore the legal ramifications. Hey, how's it going? Good. There's a stop that you don't have a seatbelt on and you're doing 50 on Providence. I don't have my seatbelt on. Where's it at? Behind you? It's, it's not worn properly. The officers, following standard procedure, pulled the driver over, but things quickly escalated. Speeding may seem like a minor offense, but combined with not wearing a seatbelt, it's a safety issue that officers take seriously. When the driver, frustrated and overwhelmed, 
refused to exit the vehicle and insisted on calling her mother instead. This led to the officers forcibly removing her from the car. Ma'am, can you get out of the car for us? No, you need to do it now. Get out of the car. Come on. Stop! Hold on! Are you serious? No, I'm not even doing anything. Okay. No, stop! What are you doing? I'm not even doing that. Uh, is there something? Are you for real? Are you like, getting stop. out of the car? No, like, why are you yanking me out? Hold on! Stop! Come on. Stop! Are you for real? Stop! 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 Stop doing this in front stop. of our kids. No. Stop! Stop! Hey! Stop! Stop! Get out of the car! Get out of the car! How we get out of the car? Stop! Come on! It's in front of your kid. Stop! Stop! Relax! Oh my gosh! Relax. 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 Mom, get my money. Why are you? Hey, let me... No, why are they telling me to get out the car? They're not telling me why you don't get out the car. Just here. Just here. From the driver's point of view, this entire encounter felt excessive. She expressed frustration about not being allowed to make a phone call and felt that the officers didn't explain their actions adequately. In moments like these, do you think clearer communication could help defuse the situation? Two. Get off of me, Mary. Get off of me! Chill out! Get off of me! Chill out! Why are they telling me We're gonna find that, okay? We're gonna find this out. We're gonna find this out. Chill. You still not telling me why you're coming to the car? I am. Alright, come here. I need to put my shoes on! My feet are hot! Okay, come here. Okay. I need to get my shoes on. Why are you trying to get my shoes? Nash, I got you! Just chill the f*** out! That's him! Get out! He's right here! Chill out! Hey, buddy. You're being weird. Stop moving. Hey, oh, oh, sorry, buddy. You okay? Get him off of me. Let me fix your cup, Sam. I'm trying to help you. Get him off of me. Listen, he has to. It's it's our policy. We have to keep a hand on you. Let's find out what the. I'm going 50 when somebody's about to turn. Pull it out on the problems. 15 and 35. Off of where? Put on the profit. Off of where? Out of, we were right behind you at O'Reilly's. Where, baby? Okay. O'Reilly's was trying to avoid all of this. <laughs> So you're asking for ID and I was getting, I was trying to call my mom. Then he comes over and says, get out the car. For what? That's, that's, it for smells what? like weed in the car. For what? Do you have any weed in the car? For what? Okay, that's what? That's what? all you had to say, We wouldn't let you go. We wouldn't let you go. You say that. You say, get out the car. Let me call my mom. You come out. Look. I'm at home. Okay. What the hell? I'm at home. Okay. Right. It's a whole bunch of nonsense for nothing. It was clear the officers had already shown a great deal of patience as the driver ignored them and instead dialed her mother. Despite this, the police made efforts to explain the situation, noting that her refusal to provide ID and the smell of marijuana in the vehicle led to the escalation. Police are trained to uphold the law and maintain safety, but when individuals choose not to comply, it can quickly lead to more serious measures, such as forcibly removing someone from the vehicle. It's in the middle. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. I'll find it. Like, like I said, it, it didn't have to. It didn't have to be like that. Huh? Why do you have to take it? When we tell you something you have to do, okay? We do it for a reason. We don't show everything that we're doing right after that. We we'll talk to you. Together. But that's how you get confrontational people. You, you, all you did was come from the other side of the seat. You came around to my get out the car. Well, I'm gonna get out the car. He literally just told me to get my ID, and I said, hold on, give me a second. I'm about to call my mom. I said, give me a second. I'm about to call my mom so she come down here. Then you come over here on this side and say, get out the car. And I said, no, I'm about to call my mom. You drive my arm and try to get me out. Did you not? So she had her seatbelt just like this. She claimed that it was on and was arguing with me. I said, it's clearly not. So then we tried to pull her over a street or two back and she drove all the way home, which you can't do either. We're not going to charge her with the fleeing and eluding, but essentially she, she dictated that whole thing. I don't, I hate doing it in front of kids and stuff like that. You talked to me, you want to teach me. I'm going to Well, we're going to the whole box. Check the bag, I'll throw out everything if we got to. Listen, you legitimately would have been let go, but... I tried to give you my ID, but you wouldn't let me get a chance. I'm saying trying to call my mom to come down here. I have my child that's who's autistic. I understand what you guys were saying, that he was first. So I was telling my mom to come down that? here. No. How? You wouldn't let me. How? Okay. You wouldn't Look let me. me. He kept saying, hey. ID, ID. Well, not ID. He kept saying, ID. Look at me. Speeding through a residential area, not wearing a seatbelt, and having a child in the car. These actions really make us question this mother's sense of responsibility. The safety of her child and the community clearly didn't factor into her decisions that day. 
Instead of choosing to de-escalate, her stubbornness and delay in pulling over turned a straightforward situation into a chaotic mess that nobody wanted. Well, Listen, you, you could have said... a chance to get out of the car or not? Well, I was yes, going to get a chance to explain I, I need to call my mom. Nice. You know, as soon as he and just asked said, me for my ID, no, the point you're not getting it. No, I, it was at least a minute. I'm going to walk over this car. Quick. Come on. Yeah. You don't have anything on you anywhere, ma'am, right? No, I don't. You bring anything to the jail, so don't. Uh, Why am I going to jail? Resisting a private possession of marijuana. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Watch out, little man. All right, mom. You gotta go back over there in the driveway, right, man? You gotta go over there with grandma, okay? All right. We're gonna walk this way. Mom! Can you come here, please? You're not gonna give Well, let her come over here. Come over here. Come over here. I need to talk to my mom first. Okay. Can I talk to my mom? After you sit down. God Y'all keep saying that you'll let me do something when I ask you, you don't. I can't go to work today. Is she carry a gun that you know of? No? Okay. You know there was bullets in there, that's why I'm asking. By the end of the incident, the driver faced multiple charges, resisting without violence and possession of cannabis under 20 grams. The presence of a child in the car only heightened the tension. This raises questions about how these situations should be handled when minors are involved. Should the focus shift more towards de-escalation when children are present, or does the law have to be enforced without exception? In your opinion, could this entire encounter have been resolved differently if both sides had handled things with more patience and understanding? Let us know your thoughts. The person that failed me, he was a rookie. Okay, so no, right. you didn't do research. I'm, I'm in New Mexico, an officer barely avoids a dangerous collision as a vehicle speeds through a stop sign, narrowly missing him. Acting swiftly, he pulls the driver over, only to hear her frantic excuse. She's rushing to the hospital to see a friend. But is there more to the story? Stay tuned as this encounter takes an unexpected turn. I did pull you over. I know. Right? You have I'm, your license? I'm, I'm really nervous. You don't have a license? My house is right here on 70. Do you have a license though? No. It's right here at the house. I don't have anything on me. Do you have your insurance or registration? No, babe. It's on my... This is my sister's car. She's out of town. Okay. Go Please. and set, roll your window up. Step out of the vehicle for me. Stop the window right there so your dog's can breathe. Okay. I'm 10 for now. Do you have the key? It's in the car. We'll grab the key so the dogs don't lock the... Door. Okay, keep it in your pocket. Okay. Back to my patrol vehicle. Do you think that's any... The Not baby's yet. already in the hospital, right? Yes, sir. Okay, what, are you, what is it going to do for you to haul ass over there? I'm stressing. But is that any reason for you to do that? No. No, not at all. Right? Because what, what are you going to do? Just sit I there? I'm going to hurt somebody. Yeah, or you're going to kill somebody. I'm all right? hurt somebody, yeah. In response to the reckless behavior, the officer quickly informed the driver of the serious danger she posed on the road. During their interaction, the officer noticed some alarming signs and began to suspect she might be under the influence, though the driver denied it. However, the situation worsened when they discovered she was driving without a valid license or insurance, both of which are legally required by the state. These violations escalated the severity of her legal troubles, leaving her facing even more serious charges. All right, do you have your ID, you know? It's not on me, everything. You, don't have, you haven't had anything to drink my, tonight? No, right. I can give you my address, I can give you everything, I can give you everything I live off of. Why, so why are you I'm over here, here. when I lit you up? Why'd I'm, you start yelling at me? I, I didn't yell at no? you. No, sir. All right. Stand right here by my, uh, my front tire. Right here? Yep. Oh, my God. Please don't. Please don't do this to me. Do what? I, I don't mean to do this to my sister. She's out of town on the preference. What's your social? So there was no reason for you to run a red light like that or run, yes, run a stop sign like that, right? Because yes, if I would have kept going, you would have T-boned my ass. Yes, sir. Because you weren't paying attention, were you? You're in a hurry. No, I was good. And what, are you going to leave your dogs in the car when you go to the hospital? No, I was supposed to drop them off at my sister's house right here on Bosa Donuts. Mm -hmm. 14. Um, I don't want to give you the wrong address. That's on me. It's right there off um, Circle. All right, take your key out of your pocket, put it on the hood. Yes, All right, what else is in your pocket? The other key to my house. All right, turn around, put your hands behind your back. You know, you're not supposed to be driving, right? Yes, sir. At this point, 
The driver seemed to comply with the officer's requests, but what happened next was unexpected. Despite her outward cooperation, this young woman couldn't handle the situation on her own, repeatedly begging the officers to contact her mother and sister for help. Uh, I'm gonna put two cuffs on you, all right? I can't call my sister? No. Is she here? No, she's out of town, but I can call my mom. Can you get the dog so they don't have to be impounded? Okay, how far is it? My mom is up the street. Four, three, five, so come. Can I please, can I please call my Four, mom? Three, five. No, we'll get her right now. Sit back over That's here. That's all I asked for. Uh, over here. You have anything in the cup, poke stick me? No, sir. You can check me. I'm just going to fill your pockets real no, quick. No, that's there. fine. All right. No, you're fine. Probably, sir. Shit. Uh, you're right a bitch. I'll call her right now. No, for real. Cause uh, I, I'll I, call I, her right now because we're not going to take the dogs. No, or please. they're going to go to the pound. I just need to call her and where, she'll be Where's right your phone at? Well, if I can get it, it's in the car. I'm asking where it's at. Where is it at? It's in the middle. Uh, what's your mom's number? Call mama. No, no, go, go on the... Yeah, that's fine. Just scroll down. Put her on speed dial. Or on, sp on speed dial? Not speed dial, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I have social anxiety. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I know you don't believe it, but it's fine. Mommy. I got pulled over. The repeated request to call her mother adds to the chaotic scene. It's as if she hopes that someone else can come and magically fix her mistakes. But here's the legal truth. Once you're behind the wheel, the responsibility is solely yours. Instead of trying to shift the attention to other issues, such as her dogs, she should have been more focused on cooperating fully. Is calling her mother a sign of desperation or simply avoidance? Mama, the cop has my phone. Please come. Oh, hold on. Can you come over here so you can get the dogs in the car? Okay, Queensberry and Pikachu. Thanks. Don't, yeah, don't hit your head. Dude, I'm f***ing Well, you did it to yourself. Yeah, I did do it to myself. So and I have to prove it's fine, it's that's, fine. No, that's fine. No, but I'm mad at myself. I don't okay, do you're this. Not, you're not going to be hitting your head on my game. Okay. I've had three shots. Three shots of what? Of 101s. It's about 4.9% of alcohol. 4.9% alcohol? Yes, you can breathalyze me about like 30 minutes ago. About 30 minutes ago? Yes, sir. Is that your only drinks then? Yes, sir. They're in the car. They're in the car? They should be. Okay. I have the rest. No, they're not what I drink. Okay. They're not open. They're closed. Oh, okay. But, but you haven't drink anymore? Can you listen to me? Yeah. So those are new ones in there? Are they like little shooters and stuff? I'm gonna put your glasses they're, back on, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. They're boosters. Okay. I bought them about an hour ago because they brought in her stepdad, her stepdad from Santa Fe. Okay. Go ahead and step out. We're going to run you through some fields real quick, okay? Okay. Okay. Face my unit. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to close this door real quick, okay? That's fine. Okay. Let's go stand in front of my vehicle for me. Huh? Can I put this up? Okay? Yes, please do. Let's go step in front of my vehicle for me. Go ahead and step, uh, look at me. Go ahead, for this test, you don't need your glasses. Go ahead and take them off for me, okay? I kind of need my glasses. Fourth. Again, I'm gonna say this. I need my glasses to see. Okay, I know, but oh, okay. I don't need them right now. I can't see shit from here. That's fine. You're gonna look at my finger right in front of I your can't face. see your finger. I'm, I'm going. Right. Okay, that's fine. Stand right here. That's not fine because you step, need to see Step in front of me. With your heels together, toes together, put your uh, put your heels together, toes together, arms at your side, all right? Yes. She was about to undergo a field sobriety test under the guidance of the police officer. With your eyes and your eyes only, I need you to follow the tip of my finger. Do you understand? I understand. Don't move your head. I just told you not to move your head. You said you understood. You understand? Don't move your head. One more time, all right? Um, <laughs> One more time. Eyeballs only. You can move your eyeballs, right? Right. Over here. Keep looking. All right. Over I've been here. there. I'm focused on you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've never done filth before? Well, apparently you have because you have your revoked no, driver's license. he was a rookie. 
Okay, so no, fine. you didn't do research. I'm, I'm, oh my God, I'm Are so Are you going to stop talking no. so we could do this? I'm going to do your test. Awesome. All right. I'm going to put my hands in my pockets. No, like you're it. not. You're going to keep them at your side, like I told you to. Don't move your head. Awesome. Go ahead and come step over here for me. Okay. You have any problems walking, standing, turning, balancing one leg? You could put your glasses on for now. I don't have them. They're in your pocket. I did. Awesome. Sorry. There we go. I'm scared, man. No, just relax. We're just running you through some fields. Dude, you're coming at me. You have any uh, problems walking, standing, turning, balancing? More than likely, yes. I have loss of balance and I'm scared. Look it up. Okay. All right. So what I need you to do is imagine an imaginary straight line from your left foot all the way to this car. Loss of balance. Let's go. All right, are you, you going to do this test or no? Yes. Please. All right, I want you to understand this test, okay? I need you to imagine an imaginary straight line from your left foot all the way to your car. Do you see it? Place your right foot heel to toe, arms at your side. I did not tell you to begin. Keep your left foot with your... No, pay attention. I'm paying attention. That's okay, not. Oh, that's fine. Place your left foot on that line. Right foot heel to toe, arms at your side. Let's go. Okay, with your left foot on that line, right foot heel to toe, arms at your side. You're gonna take nine hill to toe steps, okay? Go ahead and begin, whenever you're ready. Keep continuing where you left off. I had loss of balance. Let's go. Are you gonna start? Are you gonna continue the test? Are you gonna shut me down or should I go? I'm giving you the upper. Nervous? I'm giving you the opportunity to complete this test. One. I, I can't, I complied. So this next test, are you not gonna do it no more? Dude, I'm nervous, I can't, I just, I just can't. During the field sobriety tests, including the finger dexterity test and one leg stand, the woman's struggles become evident. Her inability to follow instructions and balance properly indicates significant impairment. Clearly demonstrates the physical manifestations of intoxication, which are crucial for determining the driver's level of impairment. You're going to look down. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, and so on for approximately 30 seconds, okay? Do you have any questions? Do you understand this test? If you're gonna count in the manner I explained to you, arms at your side, and don't stop the test until, I have com until you have completed it, okay? I mean, I wanna go. Go ahead and begin. One, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,009, 1,013, 1,014, 1,015, 1,016, 1,017. The driver once again couldn't escape the handcuffs. After struggling through sobriety tests, she was asked if she would consent to a breathalyzer test. Unsurprisingly, she couldn't complete any further tests without demanding to see her mother first. It left people shaking their heads. She was capable enough to drive a car, yet completely unable to take responsibility for herself. I passed. All right, let's go ahead and go over here. Take them to my house. Get in. I passed. I did everything you asked. I know, mommy. Don't, don't get the keys. Get the keys and take them to Terra's. Listen to me. I'm about to tell you something important. You are under arrest for DWI. Yeah. Yep. After you take our test, you have the right to choose an additional independent test. Yep. Let me start over. If you Go choose ahead. to take this additional independent test, you have the right to a reasonable opportunity who is employed by a hospital or physician of your own choice to perform an additional chemical test. Do you agree to take our test? Yep. Yes? Yes or no? Yes, I said yes. Am okay. I not here? Mom, take Terra's part of my house! 
I just told you you're not going to hit your head, right? And I also told you that you weren't going to do this to me because okay. I complied. Open your mouth. Alright. Take out! Sometime later, her mother arrived at the scene, further proving why this grown woman constantly insisted on seeing her mom. Yes, ma'am. First of all, I'm afraid of her dogs. I don't know if they'll bite me. Okay. Because they're always just with her. Uh huh. Because she just lives there, right there on 17th Street. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that she can go with me? No. So listen, this this is what this is what's going on. Okay. She's under the influence of alcohol. She's not gonna get back in anybody else's car or get go with you. As you can tell, she herself. Yeah. All right. If I let her go somewhere, who's to know that she drinks something? She goes inside the house. She does this or whatever. If we really want, if we want to, if you want to, it, it's totally up to you. Okay. Animal control, and we can do that way. And you can pick them up tomorrow. You can take the vehicle or tow the vehicle to the house, or we, we can figure something out. Then you'll have to pay for the tow and everything like that. We're trying to save you a tow bill right now. That's why we called, um, that's why we called you right. to do this. Okay. This area is not a good place. No. Because there's always a bunch of things. Yes. I'm afraid to leave my truck here. Okay. My boyfriend is legally blind, so he can't try to begin it. That's right. why I'm here by myself. How far do you live from here? I live in Tortugas. I mean... Would you want to... Could you pick her up, maybe? Pick up... Take can her. I, take. Can I speak with her so she can come. Yes. You need to run, May, you maybe that, that could probably work better. Just so we don't leave the vehicle here. As the woman continued to lash out, even damaging the police car, officers eventually allowed her mother to meet her. They hoped the mother's presence might calm her down before she was taken to jail for a DWI. But the real question remains: Would this finally change her attitude? You're not gonna kick my door. No, I'm asking. Can okay, not I'm listen. I can't knock. Please, calm down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the dogs. I'm gonna take the car. I'm sorry. Stop it. Okay. Take my glasses. I'm pissed. Oh. They're gonna help me take the, the car and everything. I'm gonna help you. Look at what he did to me. I complied. Hey. I knew. I told you to come home early. Okay. I'm helping my sister. And look at what it I did to me. Okay. That's enough. We're gonna take the car. We're gonna take the dogs home. They're not gonna take the dogs. Okay. He's gonna take me and park the truck over there because I don't want to leave it here. Clear. You know how they are. I, can say really I don't want them to bite me. Verbally agreed. Just to figure out if you can that she. We'll get we'll get you some water at the office. Stop. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. It's, it's, it's busy. I know, but you know me. I'm not really. It's busy. It's freezing. It is not freezing. Look at me. I'm in shorts. I denied. I already told you that the dog's fine. Because your dog's still outside, I bring my Marcella. inside. Okay, I'm going to take the dog and I'm going to take Tara's car, so he's going to take me over there yeah. first. So that way I don't leave my car here because there's too many. Just stop doing that. Don't do it anymore. Thank you. You're being rude to me. Yeah, because I was rude. He was rude first. I did everything right. I'm going to leave now so I can, because I'm cold. You'll be good. Stop I'll, it. I'll take her glasses so she can see. No, she keeps everything. My phone. No, Sorry. it's okay. it's right here. I got no, it right here. I want her to have everything. Okay. It's actually easier for us. There you go. Okay. All right. Do you have any other questions? <laughs> Just hope that I can take the dogs. Yeah. I mean, I went in there and grabbed her phone. They didn't bite me. They didn't bite um, They were just barking. They didn't seem to. So if you want to park your car, where is that? Okay. I'm gonna take off, bro. I appreciate it. Finally, she was taken to the police station for a breathalyzer test, where her attitude became more cooperative. Okay, gonna step over here for me and take a deep breath. 
Blow until it's that. It's like a breathalyzer. Blow until that uh, tone stops. Okay. Do I hum? No, just blow. <laughs> just breath. Okay, comes down. For uh, when we do our DREs, we have to have a dark room, so we tape tape it all the is way. Is there up. a reason why this is so tight? They're just uncomfortable. They're just uncomfortable. Okay, this one doesn't. We'll pick them up in a bit. Two more minutes. Oh, it's fine. We're gonna go one more time, okay? The woman registered a blood alcohol content, BAC, of 0.22, nearly three times the legal limit in New Mexico. Additionally, she was driving on a suspended license, marking her second DWI offense. As a result, she faced multiple charges, including aggravated DWI, driving with a revoked license, failure to stop or yield at an intersection, lack of insurance, and failure to provide vehicle registration. In New Mexico, a BAC of 0.16 or higher qualifies as an aggravated DWI, which comes with harsher penalties, including longer jail time, larger fines, and extended license revocation. This case serves as a stark reminder of the severe consequences of impaired driving. It underscores the importance of taking personal responsibility behind the wheel, knowing that repeated offenses not only put others at risk, but can also lead to long-term legal and financial ramifications. Always make the responsible choice. Don't drink and drive. Just a couple beers. Awesome. My mom needs to send it to me. Waiting for your mom to send it to you? Okay, well, while we're waiting for that, do me a favor. You set your phone down. Put your hand on the steering wheel for me. Similar to the previous case, this driver also chose to drink alcohol and did not stop at a stop sign, along with having an expired license. The incident occurred on 25-22-2023. An Illinois police officer conducted a traffic stop on a vehicle after noticing suspicious signs. And this is what happened next. Good evening. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Hey, I'm not bad. I'm Sergeant Wendell with the O'Fallon Police. A couple reasons I'm stopping you today. No, One, when you came off of uh, Bind Street. Oh, sorry. The... No, it's just like your headlights are right in my balls. Uh, when you came off of Vine Street, you didn't stop at that stop sign completely. And you even made a car going westbound kind of veer over because they were afraid you're going to go to the intersection to them. Yeah. Yeah, what was the reason for the stop at the at Vine Street? Were you just not paying attention? I was or? just with all my friends. I just, I mean. Okay. Do you have a driver's license to prove insurance yeah. on you? You said you were out with your friends. Where were you guys out at? Uh, just at the bars earlier. At the bars earlier? Awesome, awesome. She admitted to drinking beer at a bar with friends. However, a common behavior among these suspects is the insistence on requesting to see their mother. How much did you drink today? A couple. A couple? Just a couple beers. Just a couple beers? Yeah. Awesome. Waiting for your mom to send it to you? Yeah. Okay, well, while we're waiting for that, do me a favor. You set your phone down. Put your hand on the steering wheel for me. You, how old are you? Sorry. 27. You're 27. So you, grad, did you graduate high school? In 2014, so. Okay. It's, okay, is it safe to say that you know the English alphabet by chance? Like yeah. A, B, C, D. I can't do it backwards. No, I don't want you. I don't want you to do it backwards. <laughs> so, but if I wanted you to say the alphabet without singing it, right? I want you to say the alphabet without singing it, but starting with the letter. When I say start, start with the letter G. So what I want you to do is, well, hands on the steering wheel like they are. Close your eyes, and when I say start, you start with the letter G and stop with the letter V. Okay. All right. Understand? Yep. All right. Close your eyes and start. G-H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P. Awesome. All right, good. Move here. Sit out here for me. We're going to talk for a couple seconds, okay? Oh, the young lady, you can hang tight for a second, okay? All right. So, well, you don't have any weapons on you or anything like that, do you? Okay, awesome. Let's come back here. Given her admission of drinking beer earlier and the strong odor of alcohol on her person, the police informed her that she would need to undergo a field sobriety test. This test is designed to assess her behavior and reflexes to determine her level of impairment. In Illinois, drivers suspected of being under the influence are legally required to comply with field sobriety tests, which help law enforcement evaluate their ability to drive safely. Refusal to take these tests can result in additional legal consequences, including automatic license suspension and further charges. You told me you had a couple drinks tonight, right? And I could smell it when I came up to the car, that's why it kind of just hit me in the face when I walked up and talked to you, and I could just kind of see it. And you said a couple of drinks before the light of prey, during the light of prey, after, when did you start drinking, you think? I mean, Earlier today, but walk the parade, watch football. Yeah. How much do you think you've added? You said a couple, but I mean, every, everyone says a couple, right? It's the ones in the middle that we kind of miss. Probably out like of. seven, maybe total. Over a time frame of how long do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, do you have any gla you wear glasses or contacts or anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to check your eyes real quick, okay? Sure. Just for a we I want you to face away from my car, though. I don't want you to look at me. Face away from the car. Look at me. There you go. Heels are toes together. I'm not your sides. It does look like this. Do you understand? Yep. 
Any questions about that? Nope. Any blindness in either eye? No. Nope. Or abnormalities that you're aware of? Not that I know of. Awesome. Kind of relaxed. You put your left foot on that landform. Do you have anything wrong with your leg? You play sports or anything? I mean, my hips are uneven, but yeah, they're off kilter because I was a catcher my whole life. Oh, so. I got you. So, but you've but. It's something that you're used to. It's not anything that's abnormal for you at all. All right, so what I want you to do is what you have, you're wearing tennis shoes, right? Nothing's going to hinder you from walking a straight line at all? Sure. All right, can you put your left foot on that line, your right foot in front of it, heel touch and toe? You want me to go heel toe or you just want heel me to go, the like, toe. step, step? No bias wants you to stand with your left foot on the line, your right foot in front of it, heel touch and toe, like mine is. 13. 14, Keep going. Keep going. 15. I'm sorry, my. I'm scared. Okay. <laughs> Do me a favor, stand right here for me, okay? You think I'm stand right here at him? This officer right here? Yeah. Take a deep breath in. Blow as long as hard as you can. Blow, 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 blow. You gotta blow harder than that. There you go. There you go. Thank you. The breathalyzer test revealed a blood alcohol content, BAC, of 0.216, significantly above the legal limit. As a result, she could not avoid being handcuffed and taken to the police station. There, she would face formal processing and a more accurate BAC measurement. Under Illinois law, a BAC of 0.08 or higher is considered legally intoxicated, and a BAC above 0.16 constitutes an aggravated DUI, leading to more severe penalties. This level of impairment confirms the likelihood of facing serious charges, including potential jail time, hefty fines, and extended license suspension. 0.2 something. 0.216, is that yeah. bar? Okay. Face my car for me. One last thing we're going to do. Go you know, your hands for me. And the rest are driving to the influence of alcohol, okay? Well, we can call your mom when we get to the police station, okay? Uh, so we'll build them. We got some processing we got to do, and then we can make some phone calls, okay? Anything in the car you want out? Do you want to take your cell phone with you? Uh, yeah, that's great. And then if you could let her know. Yeah, we're going to let her know. Does she have, you have a wallet in there you want to take with you, or a purse or anything? Uh, no, all my stuff in my phone. Everything's in your phone, you said? Yeah. I'm gonna leave the vape in the car, okay? Because I can't come with us, I'll get thrown out. I don't want to. I'm gonna go home to my kill tonight, too. I don't think you're gonna hurt me, but I gotta do my job, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's walk back here. Assume by the trajectory we were driving, we were going, she would wanna go, or? Uh, you, you have to ask I'll her. ask her, okay. I can't see you. That's right, here. Yeah. Light it up for you. Beat it. You don't have a purse or nothing you want to take with you? No, it's all on okay. my phone. Is there anything illegal in the car I need to know about before we go through it? Nope. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hold on, stop. That high noon yours or hers? Should I write you a ticket for that? I mean, it's mine, so yeah. Okay, we'll come back here. I'll write you one real quick, okay? That address is good for you, you said? Yep. Then I'll get you out of here, all right? Yep. I appreciate your honesty, but unfortunately, with her going to jail for a drug the influence of alcohol charge, Prove me not to issue a citation yeah. as well for having open alcohol on the car, okay? Right. And then she's going to be, I don't know, if I, I, assuming you guys are friends, I can't tell you guys what to do. In about 45 minutes in Illinois, there's no bond, so she'll be able to be released for citation. She'll need a sober driver to come pick her up, okay? So, all righty? Thank you. All right, thank you, ma'am. do, do not have any of your friends that have been No, no drunk up. friends, okay? No drunk that. friends. The only lady top out here will be the handcuffs off as soon as we get inside, okay? We're on the back of this car. Mm -hmm. Deep breath in. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you. I'll let you see the results. And on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you barely feel the effects of the alcohol that you were drinking at 10, where would you rate yourself when you got pulled over, do you think? Probably a 5 or 6. Probably a 5 or 6. The suspect was released to her mother after processing was completed. We'll start the topic with a dramatic police chase as they track down a pair of scammers. Stay tuned to uncover this intriguing story. I got a receipt for mine. You guys showed them had yeah. other items oh, on it. No, no, that's not true. I, I well, they have it all on camera, and then you yeah. ran from us. On May 9, 2024, officers responded to a planned petty theft. While patrolling, officers spotted a vehicle matching the description given by the store about the two scammers. They followed the vehicle to an intersection, where it stopped at a traffic light. The officers were fully prepared to block the car, but it remained stationary. When an officer attempted to open the car door, the driver tried to maneuver and escape the officer's containment. The vehicle attempted to flee, leading the police through several locations, including Dunkin' Donuts, before heading north on Highway 95. As the suspect tried to shake off the police, one of the tires, 
which had been punctured by the tire deflation device that the police had set up during the first stop, blew out, causing the driver to lose control. Nah. He's coming back southbound. Yeah, we're going back southbound on OK. They just lost the tire. We're doing about carrying about the on the left lane. Get ready for the bell. They're going to be belling right behind the Italian American. Starting to be belling just behind the VFW. He's crashing the woods. Eventually, the out of control vehicle veered off the lane and crashed into the edge of the woods. When officers approached the vehicle, they saw the two male suspects fleeing on foot, one running north and the other heading towards Old King. Here are the developments that followed. Two males, two males fleeing northbound, one with a green shirt, he's going towards 95, towards the club, the one old king. 10 4 one fleeing northbound, other one going towards the fence on the old king club. Old king's going to uh, the VFW. 10-4. He's in Flagler. He was keen on to see when he had a dog out. He had, uh, do we have any drone operators today? Stand by on the drone request, we're going to find out at the fence. You're saying the canine pressure. We got one bedded down right here in this little wooded area. So continue to us, code three, Old King. Any units that are not on scene on 95 need to go to Old King. They need to type perimeter on that side. Well, hey, the Mustang here in Old King is taken here at the uh, funeral home. We need some units north of the VFW. He was running north of the VFW towards, uh, towards Old King. And I wanted to sound perimeter. All right. 6130 to fly. I got the north perimeter on 95. Believe the second subject can have a neon green shirt. The one across the street. Right. Yeah, the one with the neon right is the one that uh, was running northbound. Uh, okay, yeah, you didn't make it past us, so we either in these woods or the fence. But now, can I talk to me? Uh, We got two, didn't we? After successfully locating and apprehending one suspect hiding in the woods, the officers continued to move deeper into the forest to search for the remaining suspect. Aaron, where do you want to be in this? I'm going to get left. Uh, left side. We have a few subjects yeah, coming from the east side of the vehicle. Got it. Got it. Try the back door first. We're just going to need somebody to. Hey, we're going to pull the back. Ready? Uh -huh. 
Back up the truck. A little bit. Uh, Turn that window. Did you clear that front? Uh, dude, that car almost took me out. They drove straight through Duncan and then it right radio. Yeah, I almost got that. You know, I, you know, he's telling me to open the door. Yeah. Let me turn that off. After locating the remaining suspect, the other officers transported them to a safer and more spacious area to begin the arrest process. The first step was a body search to remove any items that could pose a danger to the officers. Any of this could poke you or anything like that? Huh? No. Just back them up because there's a bunch of stuff in there. Check him too. That's such a good one. Huh? Um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in court. You have the right to an attorney with you or after any questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney and desire one, the court will appoint one for you. You may stop the questioning at any time by you understand these rights I've explained to you. Um, so what happened today, man? Huh? I don't think we like an answer. Huh? No, I don't think we have nothing to talk about. Alright. You just wanna wait you wanna wait for a lawyer then? Uh your charges are grand theft, uh scheme to defraud, violence. So two felonies and one misdemeanor. You wanna talk about them? it's not gonna be there's no bond until you you gotta go to first appearance. Okay. Tomorrow. 
slide your finger. Similar to the procedure with the first suspect, the police informed the second suspect of his rights and began the interrogation. Despite clear evidence to the contrary, the suspect boldly claimed he had purchased the items and denied any theft. What kind of excuses do you think he might come up with for his reckless actions? Drop your guesses in the comments and stay tuned to find out the truth. Hey man, what's your name? I'm the deputy public. I'm going to read you your rights, alright? Daniel will be used against you in court. You have the right to have an attorney with you prior to, during, or after any questioning. If you cannot afford for you, you may stop the questioning at any time by refusing to answer further by re requesting to consult with your attorney. Do you understand these rights? Yeah, talk just a little bit louder, man. I can't hear you. You bought some items? Who was driving the car? The van. Okay, uh, so you didn't, did you come in here and steal any items? Nothing? Did, uh, you came in here, you bought items. What'd you buy? Is there any reason why they'd be saying those items weren't purchased? They seem to be paid for my Huh? Yeah. I got a receipt for my items. You guys showed them yeah. other items oh, on no, it. No, no, that's not true. I, I well, they have it all on camera, and then you yeah. ran from us. Oh, no, no. I got my money. She gave me another person to help her count out my money. Um, well, they're saying a different story, man. I'm sorry. Who, me? Both of you, yeah. No, I, they, got it, they, got, they got me, you know, they, they can show the lady she had to get a second person to recount the money from me. All right, so we'll... Then if you think you bought the stuff, then we'll push past that first past that for right now. So it's a when, dude named Jason. When you were, what? It's a dude named Jason that worked here. He's in there. I'll get the lady to purchase the item that I purchased. Alright. So when you guys were surrounded by police officers with the lights device in front of your vehicle, what what was that about? You swerved past all of us and you drove into Dunkin' Donuts parking lot almost then you drove over the curb and sidewalk and almost hit my patrol vehicle head on. You drove around me and then you threw, or so, one of you guys threw, uh, the stolen items out of the car and crashed into the woods. And then what happened after you guys crashed into the woods? I don't actually know what took place. I knew I was getting followed by police and no one else. Come on. I you said nobody, no. no. I please God. Whoever the police was uh, behind and never had there, the police got they got the little the, 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 the uh, gun out and the, the what, stuff. What, what about the what about the parked right in front of you with the lights on right in front of you and he was telling you to get out and then we even so you got no explanation for any of that. Scared for my life. I don't know. I see the guns. Can, can, huh? Yeah. Can, 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 can you say that they say I didn't purchase that? You're being charged with a scheme to defraud of the business. What was scheme to defraud? Meaning you smaller items, and then you stole the, uh, you defrauded them of the bigger items. Felony shoplifting, grand theft shoplifting, and then you have flea and elude law enforcement with lights and sirens. So you have three. So you know that they, and they, uh, this store was notified by another store that you guys are here, watching you guys on camera the entire time. And then you guys did it, and then they called us. The two suspects, identified as Samuel and Elmer, entered the store through opposite entrances. It was clear that they had planned this in advance. Surveillance footage from inside and outside the store captured their suspicious actions. Samuel was responsible for purchasing items and paying with cash before leaving the store and getting into a vehicle. Later, Elmer entered the store with an empty shopping cart and filled it with items similar to those Samuel had bought but with higher value. They executed this scam by using a previous receipt from Samuel's purchase to trick the cashier. Upon review, the store calculated the total value of the unpaid items to be $1,395. However, with the concrete evidence the police had, 
these foolish lies would not deceive them. As we've seen, no amount of entitlement or parental intervention can shield anyone from the law. It's important for everyone, especially young people, to understand that actions have consequences and the law applies equally to all. Learning accountability early on not only helps avoid legal trouble, but also builds character and responsibility. Let this be a lesson to those who think they're above the rules. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and take care.